The last time Arsenal played at Portman Road in the Premiership six years ago, Martin Keown was sent off, but a lot's happened since then. And on Wednesday, he overcame a ruptured vein to inspire a European Champions League comeback with those two late goals. The Ipswich captain, Matt Holland, is made of similar stature. He hasn't missed a match since joining them from Bournemouth three years ago. Today is his 175th consecutive appearance against the club, who told him as a 13-year-old he was too small to make the grade. Holland leads an Ipswich side that in defence welcomes back Mark Venus and the promising Titus Bramble after injury. Goalkeeper Richard Wright is keen to press his England credentials and namesake Jermaine Wright scored the winner at Leeds last week. Up front, the Scowcroft-Stewart partnership keeps last season's top scorer David Johnson on the bench. Arsenal are without Tony Adams and Robert Perez, both injured. Patrick Vieira still suspended and they're resting Lee Dixon. Sylvain Wiltord and Dennis Bergkamp are both restored to the starting lineup. Ray Parler is back from injury. Paul Durkin is the referee. The weather is bright, the pitch is superb, and it's good to see Ipswich Town back in the top division with much improved and developing facilities here at the ground. Uh, a new stand, in fact on the cards and there's Thierry Henry who's just offside no need for uh, Paul Durkin to really stop the game there but Arsenal playing in their traditional colours from right to left in the first half it's forward by Bramble for its rich and uh, looks as though Wiltord has started on the right. This is Ray Parler, who, have a more, who may have a more central role in midfield. Henri is on the near post and Bergkamp further over, and Arsenal forced the first corner. And for this, Martin Keown, after his uh, heroics on Wednesday, has moved forward, and so too has Luzhny, the other centre-back, wearing 22. And Gilles Grimondi is in there too. And that was Grimondi! Oh, and it was Martin Keown! Well, <laughs> that would have been surely too much for coincidence after the way he finished the last match. But it's very, very close here. Grimondi gets the flick on, and Keown, well, the defender in front of him actually deflected it over the bar. Corner again. And there's Grimondi again, Nipswich not defending the near post very well. This is Bergkamp. Jim Magilton. So it's an early scare for the uh, Premiership newcomers. Parler. Oh, that's a good effort by Ray Parler. That had real power and direction, and it whistled over Richard Wright's crossbar. Ray Parler certainly starting this match in central midfield. Little touch from Stokerock, that was good play, and Jim Magilton well forward here for Ipswich. Backing up here is Horidison, three in the middle for him. force a corner Scowcroft on the near post Stewart in the six yard box oh and it was Matt Holland the captain who came round the back and got virtually a free header it swung in by Jim Magilton in the corner and Arsenal a bit short there Nobody seemed to pick him up. It's that sort of day. Bright sunshine in Suffolk. Well, as yet, Stewart and Scowcroft haven't managed to unsettle uh, Keown and Lujny, but here's Jermaine Wright. Skillful. Stewart. Outside Magilton. 
The applause is for Jermaine Wright, who showed a tiny bit of skill there. A the player who started his career at uh, Millwall and then went to Wolves and Crewe. And he's making a bit of an impression here in midfield. Into the path of Grimondi, now Thierry Henry. Wiltord coming in from the far side, it's Henry's shot. And those can be awkward if they dip and bounce just in front of the keeper. Henry just uh, seeing an opportunity here. There haven't been many shots in this first half. But uh, it was safe enough. Magilton steers it through to Stewart. Ipswich have five up in this attack. This is Magilton again. This is Stewart. And it was Nelson Vivas who got across. Stokoff wasn't far away from that Stewart flick. Magilton again. He's forced a corner now. And Horidison gets up with David Seaman, and there's Bramble! Oh, and that block, Vivas, I think it was again. That's about as close as Ipswich have come with Titus Bramble there. And David Seaman is injured. There's the, um, the moment where Seaman comes to meet Horidison. Then I think he collides possibly with Keown. Bramble certainly got behind that but look it's the head of <laughs> nelson vivas quite a splendid clearance but keown is demanding a bit more from one or two people around him this is henri will toward oh leunberg closing in and the challenge is by bramble and the flag is up on the far side but i suspect that's for an earlier offside Yes, an Arsenal player ran into an offside position there in the centre and the flag went up so that Bramble, who didn't know that, uh, wouldn't have had to make that challenge, but a very good one it was to uh, deprive Ljungberg. Well, pretty even, that first half. A couple of blocks in front of the goalkeeper, the nearest we came to a goal, but uh, Arsene Wenger will be happy enough, I should think, after Wednesday, but um, Titus Bramble, this 19-year-old centre-back of Ipswich, looks a real prospect in the making he came closest to scoring with an effort blocked by Vivas but he also defended with great assurance against the likes of Thierry Henry half-time nil-nil there's a famous Ipswich Town face and one of the members of the 1978 FA Cup winning team against Arsenal Kevin Beattie what a fine defender he was There have been some fairly uh, spectacular lunches held at Ipswich Town down the years, but the most important one was in the 1930s when uh, the then Arsenal chairman, Sir Samuel Hill Wood, was uh, meeting his Ipswich Town counterpart, Ivan Cobbold, and made the suggestion that uh, Mr Cobbold should start a professional football club in Ipswich. And that's how Ipswich Town came into being. Arsenal, of course, in the 30s were the most famous club in the land and the most successful. So there's always been a great affinity between the two boards of directors right up to the present day when uh, David Sheepshanks and David Dean were on football focus together this morning. Here's uh, Nelson Vivas for Arsenal to Bergkamp. Outside him is Wiltord. Ornery is coming in from the far side. They've also got Lundberg up. And there's Henri, and just wanted a more firm contact. Next switch, who were caught a little cold at the start of the first half, almost going down the same road again, but this is Stewart. Wilness. Here at Portman Road, and 
George Burley was very anxious that Ipswich acquitted themselves well again against uh, one of the championship contenders. Tyler, and there are four up with him for Arsenal. One of them here is Vivas. Omri making his way across the area now, and Richard Wright had to be off his line quickly with a good ball in. Venus on the chest of Scowcroft. This is Stewart. And now, oh, that's a free kick given against Parler. It's Magilton who will take it. Bramble has come forward with Horidison. It's come out to Matt Holland. Good return. But, oh, it's Stewart! And it puts down the in the lead. It's Marcus Stewart. And what a great ball by Matt Holland. Well... This is a wonderful ball by the captain. It cuts out the Arsenal defenders and Stewart just nodded it and dropped it past Seaman. Really well made goal and uh, Keown and uh, Silvino and Grimandi just standing there as Stewart sneaked in behind them and Ipswich are in front. Holland to Wilness. Oh, Groff coming in! Oh. It's a firm header. It's Ipswich who are going to make the substitution. James Scowcroft hasn't seen the board yet, but he's going to come off and be replaced by one of the heroes of the playoff final last season, 23-year-old Richard Naylor, who scored in that Wembley game against Barnsley but has been out of action this season with injury up to now. Made his comeback by the reserves and gets a big ovation. Now then, Ljungberg. Henri, good feet. Wil Wiltord with uh, Vivas outside him here. Wiltord again. Curved ball in, Henri comes forward. Oh. And... Uh, Richard Wright just doing enough. Horidison. Forward by Jermaine Wright and Naylor is through. Great chance for him to score and he misses it. Just after coming on. He's got no defenders to worry about. But in trying to steer it wide of Seaman, he puts it, uh, as you can see from his expression, disappointingly wide of the post. Here he is again. Clapham's made a run now from uh, left to right, further forward. Holland. Shipping it for... Oh, good turn by Stewart! Naylor coming in from the far side, others joining now, there's Naylor. I think uh, Magilton wanted it pulled back to him for a shot. And he's expressing his feelings to Stewart. And with no disrespect to uh, Ipswich, Arsene Wenger would know that these are matches that Arsenal can't afford to slip up in if they're going to sustain a real championship challenge. They're one down here. George Burley's team deserving of their lead for the way they took the second half by the scruff of the neck. And it comes to Naylor. Oh, that's a good back heel. Here's Marcus Stewart taking on Lushni. Magilton. Stewart, the goal scorer, feeding off Naylor. I think Arsenal will shortly be thinking about making a substitution of their own, if not two. I don't think Arsene Wenger will let this go too much further. Henri is waiting for the 
service in the penalty area, but Bergkamp all too easily bustled out of that. Now Keown comes in on Naylor and Lundberg in strongly too for Arsenal. Short to Bergkamp and Lundberg flattened by Horidesen as he went for a return. This is a free kick to Arsenal in quite dangerous territory. And there's pushing between Keown and uh, his marker. I don't think the referee saw... Oh, and there's a... Something's happened in the area there. Uh, Keown. Oh, and well saved by Richard Wright. Well, there was all sorts going on in there. And one or two players have lost their concentration completely. Martin Keown was involved in a scuffle here, as you can see, far side. And it goes on a bit. And that's a Bergkamp effort, which um, Wright turns around. It's a corner again to Arsenal. And it's Keown again. And in it goes from Parler. Bramble. Jermaine Wright. And Ipswich have got Clapham in a good position here. And the block. Takes the ball out for a corner. Holland at the back. Oh, and the touch off. Stewart very close to his second. Matt Holland got up on the far side here to knock the ball back in. And Seaman, well, did enough, I suppose, really, to put Stewart off. Wide it goes to Silvino. Carnu. Bergkamp. Oh, and Lundberg got free! No marking there at all in the Ipswich defence. Mark Venus looking around and arguing with Horidesen, but this was... Oh, he's not offside. Should have been the equaliser, perhaps, for Freddie Lundberg. Good second half, this. Holland. And you feel there might be another goal in the game. This is Horidesen. Stewart to Clapham. And Stewart goes again. And in the centre, Naylor is waiting. Being joined now by two others. It's Clapham. Oh, and there is Naylor! Should have been in. Real opportunity, Magilton gets the first header and Naylor on the end of it. Good deep cross by Jamie Clapham. Magilton has crept up on the far side and Naylor heads wide. His second opportunity to sew this game up. Bramble with the volley clearance. Carnu. Good looking ball, Henri's there, Thierry Henri and Dennis Bergkamp and Arsenal have equalised. Bergkamp scores. It was a good attack. And Carnu with a lovely through ball for Thierry Henri. I think Bramble half got to him, right came out and the goal was unguarded. And Bergkamp slots it in for Arsenal. Henri here with Bramble, then right makes the save. But an unerring finish by Dennis Bergkamp with seven minutes of normal time left. Arsenal are level. And that's the strength of Arsene Wenger's team. They always have the character to come back. Here he is again. This really is a good second half. Now it's Henri and Richard Wright came out. And did he make the right decision? Well... It's a question he may not have to ask too often because uh, Henri missed it. But this was danger again. Bergkamp now the provider. And Henri is stretching the defence. And floated that one wide of the post. Well, maybe the goalkeeper did do the right thing there. Shut him down. There was a real edge of excitement round the ground because the game has been such that you are never quite sure whether there's another goal in it somewhere. Here's a Naylor. Oh, Magilton, perhaps there should have been. 
Yeah, hugely. He's such a good striker of the ball, Jim Magilton, as his hat trick here in the playoff semi final testified. And there was an opportunity as the ball sat up nicely, he completely sliced it. Well, it's been a nerve wracking afternoon for George Burley and Dale Roberts. We're into stoppage time now. As Naylor heads on to Stewart here, Naylor again, he's got Jermaine Wright to his right, and that's a free kick. It's a foul by Vanatza, and here are Ipswich, 30 yards out, with a free kick in stoppage time. And Venus to strike it. Oh, and Seaman just gets there. Mark Venus, who scored on the opening day at Tottenham very nearly made the other North London club pay there. Well, a gripping second half. In the end, either team could have won it. And in that respect, I suppose, a draw, a fair result. But Ipswich will look back and remember not just Stewart's goal, but the two chances that fell Naylor's way. It could have been 2-0 before Bergkamp came up with Arsenal's equaliser. And once again, they've shown that they have got powers of recovery. And what would have been three points for Ipswich is now only one. Naylor left to reflect on uh, two openings. A final score at Portman Road after an excellent second half. George Burley's team playing some fine football. Ipswich won, Arsenal won.